Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach, and I have been a professional therapist for 31 years. I've learned many things from many, many people during that time, and I want to pass one of those things on to you today. I want to acknowledge with thanks the source of what I'm about to tell you, uh, who is a veteran therapist named Nancy Napier, N-A-P-I-E-R, in a book that's useful that she calls Recreating Yourself. It's a book for survivors of toxic parents and dysfunctional childhoods. Have you recently or ever encountered a very difficult decision, something really impactful on your life, like moving geographically to a far place, or buying a new home, or uh, investing a large amount of money, or getting married and committing, and or having a baby, and or divorcing, or confronting somebody, or changing jobs, or going back to school. You ever experienced difficulty making complex, impactful decisions like that? If you have, I congratulate you on being normal. And I want to offer you, I want to pass on to you, Nancy's tool that can help you make the right choice. Um, if you're not an impulsive decision maker, which some people are, if you're thoughtful and you deliberate the pros and cons of complex major decisions, you may feel self-doubt or even paralysis, like I can't decide, I don't know what to do. If that's ever happened to you, or if it is happening now, here is a useful exercise. It is called uh, meeting with your, quote, future self. This may take some imagination, but I invite you to open your mind, and before you make your mind up, consider what this might be like. One theme of this exercise is that you will, you have been, and will continue to age and become more and more wise until you die. There will come a time in the future when you are approaching your own death. Uh, in the best of worlds, you will know this rather than being involved in an accident or having a sudden heart attack. But you will be aware that you are approaching the end of your life. At that point, you will have achieved the maximum amount of wisdom about yourself and the world at large. So imagine what it would be like if you, at your present age, whatever it is, could have an audience with, have a conversation with, your future wise self. Imagine what that might, might be like. Here is one way of doing that. Open your mind to this concept. Again, I invite you not to make your mind up in advance until you try this. Try it out and see what it feels like. It may be useless. It may be very powerful. If you have a question that is baffling you or paralyzing you, um, decide to seek the wisdom and the counsel of your expert future self. Find a physical location and a time where you can be comfortable physically. You can sit, relax, lie down, close your eyes if you wish. Um, let go of all other distractions for just a few minutes. This can be a relatively quick experience. Open your mind and adopt the curiosity of a student. Let yourself breathe well from your belly, not your chest, your belly. Um, allow yourself to feel some degree of curiosity, like I wonder what I'm going to learn here. Imagine in your own unique way what you will look like as you are approaching 
your own death years in the future. Uh, imagine that you are still absolutely clear-minded, you're completely sharp, logical, aware, vocal, articulate. Imagine what you might look like. Imagine the setting. Are you in bed? Are you in a comfortable chair? Are you indoors? Are you out in some safe place in nature? Where is your future self? Where do you imagine? If you don't know, it doesn't matter. Just focus on this wise person that you are becoming and imagine that you now, your present age, enter the space of your older self, wherever that might be, and you greet her or him. And you say hello in your own way, and you identify yourself in your own way. Notice how you feel and notice what you think as you consider doing this and as you actually do it. There's no right and no wrong to this whatsoever. There is only what you think and feel and image. So imagine approaching your future self, identifying yourself, greeting him or her, and asking if um, this older person will speak with you. And if they acknowledge you and say yes, then allow a dialogue to unfold in a way that feels natural to you. You can begin in many ways. You can say how strange it is to do this. You can say, I've never done this before. You can say, I feel a little apprehensive. I don't know what this is going to be like. Uh, I'm uncomfortable thinking that you're near the end of your life, or I am at the end of my life. You can let this dialogue begin and unfold in any way you want. <clears throat> be comfortable and be natural. And when the time seems right to you, look your future self in the eye and say, I'd like to ask you a question and get your advice or something like that. And if your future says, certainly, what can I do for you? Ask your question. Be as clear and specific as you can. That might be uh, something like, I'm really having trouble deciding whether I should divorce, or whether I should or we should have another child, or whether I should start going to addictions counseling or whether I should declare bankruptcy. Any number of major life questions, light, big or small, ask as specifically and clearly as you can, ideally in one sentence. Try not to go into big, long, lengthy explanations. Be brief, be clear, be direct, and then be quiet. Allow whatever occurs in your mind to become clear. Don't prejudge, don't compute, don't think. Well, I think I would say, let all of that go. Just be open to whatever occurs to you. Your future self can react in any way. Um, it may or may not be insightful at the moment. Um, notice that this is very similar to paying attention to hunches, or your intuition, or the famous still small voice that people who stop and contemplate the world often hear. So be open to any kind of wisdom that your future self may pass on to you. She or he knows you better than anyone else on earth. That means the advice that he or she can offer you is probably of a higher quality than anybody else. Who is better able to advise you except you? Listen intently, react in any way you want, ask further questions if they occur to you, <clears throat> and allow the dialogue to proceed until you feel finished. 
Notice as this occurs uh, how you feel, what you think. When you're ready, um, thank your future self for the wisdom that you may have received. Um, ask if it's acceptable that you come back and consult uh, her or him again. And if it is, notice that asset as an option anytime you're having difficulty making a decision. So after you've exchanged thanks and acknowledgments, say an affectionate goodbye and allow yourself to come back into your body <coughs> and wiggle your fingers and toes and move your shoulders and rotate your head a little bit and allow yourself to breathe easily and well open your eyes if you if they were closed and reorient, reorient yourself to wherever you are physically in the real world in the present and think back to what just happened you might try repeating in your mind or out loud the question you ask and the advice you received another option is while it's fresh in your mind write down your impressions of this experience whatever they were your thoughts your feelings associations any actions you want to take or avoid capture the wisdom that is within you at any time Notice how you're feeling right now about this potential helpful exercise that you can choose to experiment with and help yourself find the wisdom that's already in you to help you make difficult, impactful decisions. Enjoy respectfully learning to communicate with your wise future self. Thanks for watching.